NASA recalculates the chances of asteroid Bennu colliding with Earth, and China now wants to sever it. Utah Desert, September 24, 2023, United States A dazzling streak of light spans the sky, it is not a meteor, but a little capsule that was launched a few minutes ago from an interplanetary spacecraft that had crossed the Earth 10,000 kilometers away. A team of NASA scientists and Air Force soldiers rushed to retrieve the capsule housing it. It may sound like the premise of a science fiction thriller, but it is exactly what will happen in the near future, when the NASA spacecraft OSIRIS-REx will carry dust collected a year earlier on the surface of the asteroid Bennu to our doorstep. However, if we foresee the date, already discussing how the expedition will end, it is because this small asteroid has recently been the focus of attention that has little to do with mineralogy, and everything to do with its hazard. NASA even called a press conference on August 11th to share crucial news, and China has stunned everyone with some of his belligerent words. Follow me, and let's go figure out why all of this is occurring, perhaps by taking two steps back first. The OSIRIS-REx mission, one of NASA's most ambitious in recent years, began in 2016 with a launch from Earth followed by a long journey of hundreds of millions of kilometers to reach Bennu in 2018, an asteroid with a mass estimated to be around 70 million tons and a maximum diameter of 565 meters. In late October 2020, the probe moved to approach Bennu and briefly touch it with its mechanical arm. It had generated a puff of nitrogen in the process, causing the debris on the asteroid's surface to be hoisted up and collected in the bottom half of the same mechanical arm. The mission had been a success, however the probe had collected more material than intended, complicating following operations to place the debris into the container, which would eventually be parachuted to Earth. The probe had stayed with Bennu for a few more months to conduct additional observations, and analyze the same little crater produced by the impact of its mechanical arm. Finally, on May 10, OSIRIS-REx fired up its engines to begin its voyage away from the asteroid and toward Earth. To reach us, the probe will go two circles around the Sun, spanning a total distance of nearly 2.3 billion kilometers. OSIRIS-REx will release the container containing the shards as it approaches our planet, allowing it to make the tumultuous re-entry into our atmosphere. The capsule has a maximum circumference of 81 centimeters and a height of around 50 centimeters, resembling a spinning top. After retrieval, it will be sent, along with its unusual contents, to NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, where much of the lunar rocks recovered during the Apollo missions are kept. NASA intends to make approximately one quarter of the data acquired on Bennu available to researchers, with the remainder being kept for future studies. The notion is that in the coming decades, new instruments for doing analysis will be developed using technology we don't yet understand which could provide fresh insights and scientific evidence. But why was Bennu chosen out of all the asteroids? Bennu was chosen as the target because it is a genuine time capsule. Not only that, let us try to list the various explanations together. To begin with, Bennu is a conventional mining exploitation asteroid. It's not very big, about 490 meters in diameter, and it's quite close to Earth, perhaps too close, as we'll see because it's one of the Apollo objects, or asteroids with an orbital semimajor axis greater than the Earth's, but perihelion distance is less than the Earth's aphelion distance. All space agencies across the world are interested in determining the best approach to harness the asteroid's resources, work it where it is or bring it home in Earth's orbit. Bennu is also an extremely black asteroid. It is classed as a B-type asteroid, which indicates it has a high carbon content in and among its numerous materials. Bennu's carbon content provides a surface on the asteroid that reflects only approximately 4% of the light that strikes it. In comparison, Venus, the solar system's brightest planet, reflects approximately 65% of incoming sunlight, whereas Earth reflects approximately 30%. Bennu is a carbonaceous asteroid that hasn't experienced severe, composition-altering modification, which means that chemicals and rocks from the formation of the solar system can be found on and beneath its deeper-than-pitch-black surface. Bennu is extraordinarily dark, but it is also quite old, it has been basically unaltered for billions of years. It is not only nearby and carbonaceous, 
but it is also so primitive that scientists estimate it formed in the first 10 million years of our solar system's history, about 4.5 billion years ago. It has drifted closer to Earth from its likely birthplace, the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, due to the Yarkovsky effect, the slight push created when the asteroid absorbs sunlight and re-emits that energy as heat, and gravitational tugs from other celestial bodies. Another intriguing aspect of Bennu is that it is thought to be a rubble pile asteroid. I know that nearly seems like an insult, but it's a legitimate astronomy classification. Rubble pile asteroids are celestial bodies formed by gravity compressing a large amount of stony debris. This type of debris is created when a much larger body is shattered by an impact. These shards of cosmic junk most likely coalesced into the rubble pile that is Bennu in only a few weeks. Inside, Bennu is riddled with holes, with 20 to 40 percent of its volume taken up by empty space. If the asteroid begins to revolve significantly faster or interacts too closely with a planetary body, it may break apart. And it appears to be formed of more than simply carbon. Bennu, in reality, is likely to be rich in platinum and gold when compared to Earth's normal crust. Although most asteroids aren't comprised almost entirely of solid metal, many do include components that may be exploited industrially instead of Earth's limited resources. Close examination of this asteroid will provide answers on whether asteroid mining during deep space exploration and travel is feasible. Although rare metals garner the greatest attention, water is likely to be Bennu's most vital resource. Water, two hydrogen atoms bonded to an oxygen atom, can be consumed or divided into its constituents to produce breathable air and rocket fuel. Given the expensive cost of carrying stuff into space, if astronauts can harvest water from an asteroid for life support and fuel, the cosmic beyond is closer to human accessibility than ever before. Furthermore, even before OSIRIS-REx left, it was known that Bennu is an active asteroid, which indicates that it ejects material from its surface on a regular basis. It is primarily particles and rock pieces up to 10 centimeters in diameter possibly emitted by cooling and heating processes caused by the night and day cycles, the surface rocks may shatter, ejecting debris. The Bennu mission was also a good opportunity to closely examine the slow but dangerous orbital shifts that these things can cause. Bennu's fate is influenced by more than just gravity. Sunlight warms the side of Bennu that faces the sun, but because a day on Bennu lasts just 4 hours and 17.8 minutes, the section of the surface that faces the sun shifts constantly. As Bennu continues to rotate, it expels this heat, which causes the asteroid to move closer to the sun and change its orbit. It's the so-called Yarkovsky effect, which you've almost certainly heard of. A force no greater than the weight of three grapes, but capable of sending Bennu drifting 300 meters every year. Until two years ago, experts estimated that Bennu had a 1 in 2700 chance of colliding with Earth within the next century, during its periodic approaches. As we will see, the evidence collected by the OSIRIS-REx mission has deteriorated this assessment. Supporting the hypothesis that Bennu is one of the most deadly asteroids in circulation among those that pass our planet's orbit on a regular basis, OSIRIS-REx is currently on his way back, engaged in a phase of the mission that should not have made headlines. So, on August 9, there was an unexpected request from NASA to attend a briefing that would be held two days later, and in which important news about the current mission would be revealed. What was the situation? Was the spacecraft heading in the wrong direction? Had we lost touch? Had the data obtained revealed that something unusual was going on on Bennu? No way, no how. NASA, as usual, inflated the tone of the announcement, and everything was settled with the reveal of important, but not epochal, news. Apparently, using the data obtained by OSIRIS-REx, a team of scientists was able to perform an extremely precise computation of Bennu's orbit, determining the asteroid's position at any time with an accuracy of 2 meters. That's like measuring the distance between the Empire State Building and the Eiffel Tower with a few thousandths of a centimeter mistake. The researchers then calculated the likelihood of a collision with Earth between now and the year 2300. The researchers discovered a 1 in 1750 likelihood of a potential collision during the next three centuries, which is a somewhat higher probability than previously calculated. 
almost majority of the most dangerous interactions with Bennu will take place between late 2100 and early 2200, with the single most likely impact taking place on the afternoon of September 24, 2182. Bennu will have a 1 in 2700 chance of colliding with Earth on that Tuesday. Despite the slightly increased likelihood of impact, Bennu's hazards should not keep anyone awake at night. There is a 99.9% .9 likelihood that Bennu will not collide with Earth in the next three decades, and a Bennu impact would not spark a global extinction like the Chicxulub impact that wiped off the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. And, if our great-grandchildren are confronted with a worse problem, they will have plenty of time and technology at their disposal to deal with it. It is not yet clear how. The debate continues, even if, just recently, scientists at China's National Space Science Center calculated that if 23 Long March 5th rockets, each weighing approximately 990 tons, collided with the asteroid at the same time, it would be enough to deflect the asteroid from its path by nearly 9,000 kilometers, 1.4 times the radius of the Earth. Asteroid impacts pose a serious threat to all life on Earth, said Mingdao Li a space science engineer at Beijing's National Space Science Center and the study's primary author. Asteroid deflection on an impact trajectory is critical to mitigating this threat. A kinetic impactor is still the most feasible means of asteroid deflection. The study also aims to show that orbital deflection of huge asteroids similar to Bennu can be accomplished without the use of a nuclear device if done 10 years before impact. However, NASA will be the first space agency to enter the field, launching the mission DART, Double Asteroid Redirection, on November 24 this year, which would send a vehicle to the asteroid Didymos, 11 million kilometers away. Once there, the spacecraft will collide with Dimorphos, Didymos moon, a rock orbiting the asteroid. The impacts will next be measured in order to confirm the theoretical calculations. But, after dropping the capsule with the samples on the Utah desert, what will become of OSIRIS-REx? OSIRIS-REx will continue to cruise into interplanetary space, leaving its cargo behind. The probe's plans are still unclear, but NASA believes it can be reused for another journey to a fresh asteroid. Perhaps Apophis, a deadly near-Earth asteroid that will pass close to Earth in April 2029. For the time being, dear OSIRIS-REx, have a safe journey and thank you for everything.